what you're looking at right here is both uh, the product as, it's, it exists, as it exists now and also what we're working on for the year. And this is gonna help to demonstrate um, what we're doing in the product. So with that, uh, you're looking at CDMS. And as part of that, you see the Workbench tab. And the Workbench tab uh, is how you would access uh, the Workbench application. And as a data manager, I have access to four different studies uh, here in, in the application. And these panels help me understand the progress that's being made in collecting data for these trials. And as part of that, I have the left-hand side of the data, which represents the amount of data being captured uh, in the system. And then the right-hand side, I have the health of the study. So different events that may have occurred, adverse events, uh, queries that are unresolved, overdue visits, things of that nature. And it helps me know which study I should pay attention to in the application. From there, I can drill into any one of these studies and get more information. So from here, I have the unresolved queries and the trending related to that information. I have the, the listings that we talked about before that we'll sh I'll show you in a second. I have the closeout rate. So often when a subject closes out, there's unresolved queries that need to be addressed. And so I get at a glance information related to those. And I have alerts that are coming in related to certain criteria that have been exceeded. And therefore, I need to pay attention to uh, something that's happened in the system, all, all built into what we're working with here. So with that, I'm gonna look at a uh, listing for central lab data. I'm gonna drill into that. As I mentioned before, this is designed to look as close as possible to a spreadsheet. So you have familiar concepts in here. What you'll also notice is that there's lots of what I call decorations on the data. So I have indications of open and answered queries. I have indications of intentionally left blank as well. I can hover over a lot of these decorations to get more information. And what you'll also see is there's that review concept I mentioned before. So as part of that review, I can uh, review new, I can mark new things as review. I can uh, close them out, et cetera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look again at that intentional left blank item. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that particular row as reviewed. And so you can work your way through that listing and then uh, keep track of your progress against the data, uh, which is very useful. You also see the triangles. The triangles represent change. Uh, so if I know that particular cell has changed or that row has changed, I can see both of those from this perspective. We repeat those triangles at the row level too because this data can be very wide and as you move to the right, you may not know that it's changed to the right and so you wanna see the row column, the row indicator to, to indicate that as well. But then I, I can look at the data and I can filter the data as well. So if I wanna go in here and I want to focus on a specific aspect or a specific part of this information, I can filter it. So all the columns are filterable, they can be sorted as well. And in this column, because it's specialized, I can actually go in and I can turn on and turn off the highlighting as well. Uh, which gives me a lot of flexibility of working with the data. So that, that lets me, uh, gives a quick uh, introduction of how you can work with the data and, and review the information. Um, but I want to be able to modify these and I can modify the listings uh, through the UI as well. So I can go in here and I can begin to add additional columns as I work with the data. So I can add additional study attributes and information. I can see here the, the lab information that was included in this particular form. And I can move these columns up and down left and right and remove them and, and do what you might expect you can do as you build out a listing in the application. But what I wanna do now is I wanna go look at additional study data and do that reconciliation process that I talked about before. So here I can go in, I'm gonna search for date of birth for demographics. I'm gonna grab that field, I'm gonna drag it into the, the listing and along with that came the form itself. So now I can see the central lab data, the demographics data and the additional columns are here to pull in as well if I want to. And you can see that both are included in the listing. So it's a really easy way to construct listings and to be able to put different types of data together all through the UI. So now I pull that in, I can see that new column is shown here. I can mouse over and see the source that the data came from. So it's demographics date of birth versus the central lab date of birth. And I can continue to filter the data down. So I can filter on this column here and focus on a specific visit that I might wanna work with. And again, you can do a lot of things with the UI to kind of find those um, exceptions and discrepancies that you need to work with in the data. But as I mentioned before, there are times when you need to do more advanced things as well. And that's where CQL comes into play. So CQL sits behind every single one of these listings. I can work directly with it if I have permission to do so in the system. So some of those more advanced concepts I can do here as well, but it also makes it really easy to work with the data. Um, if you know a little bit of SQL, you can see that it's easy to be able to construct and work with the data. I can change conditions here. So I'm gonna go ahead and change where the central lab date of birth doesn't match the demographics date of birth for that second visit. And I go ahead and apply that. Anytime you apply the CQL, it changes the UI above as well. So again, there's this nice working back and forth with the data. Um, it's easy to, easy to do that. And again, you'll have some advanced users wanting to use it this way, some using it through the UI, but those more advanced capabilities are here if you need to do so. And, and subqueries and other functions are all here 
uh, it's a full-blown language with lots of capabilities, which will be important for different activities that you're doing in the system. So with that, um, now I can see really clearly that date of birth, I have some that don't match. And I see that this particular date of birth here uh, has an answered query on it. And for every cell, I can drill in and get more additional information on that particular cell. So from right here, I've clicked on that cell. I can see that there is uh, query details related to that cell because there's an, an answered query open. I get some basic header information. Who's the subject? What visit are we talking about? This is the demographics field again. I can see status information related to it if I need to. Uh, and I also understand the, the age of that particular query as I'm working with it. Now this data is, is being updated uh, in real time related to EDC. So I have this information. It's gonna double check to make sure that this uh, hasn't changed. In other words, there's no new answers to this or it hasn't been closed out already. That's gonna reduce the amount of time it takes to have that communication gap back and forth with the sites. Um, and then I can drill in EDC too. So if I wanted to go back to EDC, look at the review, look at it in the context of the form itself, I could do that as well. And this same concept of being able to do this also for central lab data or any other source of data that you have, if they have the capabilities to support the UI, you can manage it all uh, through the API, sorry. You can manage it all through that one user interface, um, which is gonna really uh, help you to kind of close these out and manage these more quickly. The same thing's true for any cell. So I have additional cell information. So I have detailed information on any cell and I could answer, uh, raise a new query as well um, related to that data for any cell. And we're gonna automatically route that back to the source so we know they know that that query has been raised uh, on that piece of data related to it. So that's a little bit about the listings capability, the discrepancy management built into it. But we're gonna take a look now at the export concept. So we're gonna go over to the exports. So we mentioned that exports also a big part of what we're doing in the application. Um, it's critical for being able to get the data out uh, for, other, um, for other systems. And so here what we're looking at is what we call export definitions. Export definitions are, are simply just a collection of listings that have been chosen and been created for the purposes of transformations or working with the SDTM and other form of forms of transformations that you might do. And there's a workflow associated with it. We'll go into that in a second. But I can look at that data and these export definitions uh, have jobs associated with them. So I can schedule them to run on a regular basis and work with them. So let's take a look at and see what it looks like to build one of these out. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new export definition. We've got a nice wizard here to help you walk through the process of creating these. So in this example here, I'm gonna create a new export definition. I'm gonna actually choose a different type. So I, each type of export that we have uh, supported is gonna have different augmentations that go with it to help the process through. So in this example here, we're choosing SDTM. And with that, a few things are gonna happen automatically. So one, we're gonna use that study design information the SDTM terms that you may have um, included in your, in your design, we'll pull those over and make sure that those automatically become the variable names in the data. We're gonna make sure that data the data types are correct for what you're trying to do with SDTM. We're gonna make sure that the date formats are correct. And we're gonna do lots of other things that are very standardized for what, when you're working with SDTM. And that's that augmentation of helping you with that, that data. And that's gonna grow over time to have more abilities to be able to help you as you build out these listings and build out these uh, export definitions. I can schedule these as well, and I can choose a format, CSV, SAS, and other, other formats in the future as well, working with the data. I set that up, and then I begin to select my listings. So selecting the listings, each listing is gonna correspond to essentially a domain that you're gonna work with in the, in the case of SDTM. And I can pull those listings from any, any set that I've created before in the past uh, across, the, across the system. I can also choose to pull them from previous export definitions as well, and, uh, and libraries of information in the future as well as you work into it. So, you either are gonna pull one that's already set up and ready to go, or you're gonna create a new one that's gonna be used um, to, that you're gonna to modify to, to meet the purposes and, and the needs that you have for that export. At that point, I have, in this case, it's SDTM. So I have the domains that I'm working with. I can change these if I need to. This came over again from the design information that we got from EDC. So I can change these, I can modify the titles and work with it. But I can see at a glance the number of fields associated with the listing, and I can see the forms or the data sources that make them up as well. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to begin to uh, to make sure that all the formats match what they need to be. So they start off as a copy of those listings we're working with in draft mode. And then I'm going to move into begin to work with the data. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and take a look here at one of the uh, the listings to kind of show you what that looks like. Very, very similar to the listings we looked at before. The biggest difference is I can move into what's called inspect mode to get a more technical perspective on working with the data itself. That's gonna help me work with the data uh, and know the data types that I'm working with. I can go into a given column and look at the properties associated with it. 
that it's going to allow me to change certain things that, 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 that will help me along the way. So the variable name, I can change that from right here. If I have a different data type that I want to represent this data as, I can choose the data type and it'll transform that automatically. In the case of the code list here, I can change the labels and the way and the terms that we're using for those transformations very easily uh, at a glance here as I work with the data. And that's important to do those basic concepts quickly and easily as you're working with it. Beyond that though, um, there are times when you're gonna um, want to be able to do more than that. And so you, you're, you're gonna make your way uh, working through each domain and getting these listings ready to go. Um, but as you're working with the data, you also might need to drop into CQL at times to do more of those advanced transformations. That's here as well. I can save that off uh, as the transformations that are going to occur related to this listing. But I'm, I'm working through each and every listing. And as I complete each and every listing that are part of this uh, definition and, and, and get them ready to go, they're all going to be marked as ready. And when they're all ready, it'll be published. And then we'll begin to run the jobs associated with that export and delivering that data where it needs to go uh, in the system. So all that's going to really help you uh, to be able to easily construct exports and will help augment uh, the, the, the help that you're going to get related to um, getting those export definitions done. <laughs>